Travis Wingoodzell. I guess we'll talk about Brad Wilcox. <coughs> As uh, it's uh, spreading like wildfire around Utah. ABC4 News, Utah is the latest to cover the story. As uh, I think two news and uh, Salt Lake Tribune have uh, likewise covered it. So, in case you're missing it, which I doubt, because there's a certain popular person who had it recorded from the Zoom and uh, had posted it in segments God, on YouTube, and a couple of those segments are 30 minutes of blank. Dear God, such incompetence. And so, it's not a regular person, it's a popular, well-produced person in the ex-Mormon community that I've been warning you about as he took the opportunity to groom a kid over this issue. I keep warning you and you don't listen to me, you don't believe me. So Brad Wilcox on Sunday did a Zoom conference to youth in Alpine. He is now back to working at BYU in ancient religion. I warn you and you don't listen to me, you don't believe me. He knows nothing about the ancient cultures. Nothing. And yet they put him in there because he can read a manual. But he used to be in the young men's presidency for the church. I think he was second counselor, something like that. So he's a nobody, but he's been made popular because he held a position in the church, and now he works at BYU. My brother got him up to a master's at BYU, and he now works in the records department and lost 15 million Mormons. He went on to get a PhD in Michigan, as he had to pull the religion card, because BYU purposely does not educate anybody. I know you went there. Well, it, it sucks to be you. <laughs> you have no clue how much you've been deprived of knowledge until you go to another university, especially one outside of the United States. Then all of a sudden you wake up to a whole new reality of knowledge. But anyway, Brad Wilcox, in his meeting, came out with lots of stuff, but apparently the one that everybody's offended with is that he exposes that the Mormons have still been incited to be racist, even after all these decades. Because uh, ABC4 doesn't seem to understand the issue. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it and read it to you. But this is the problem. The church just ingrains hate in Mormons. And so Mormons are like, what? A uh, me? No! I have a friend who's female or LGBTQ or black or poor. <laughs> I'm not racist, sexist, bigoted and hate the poor. Not me! <laughs> oh my god. And so, yeah, Austin from ABC4 Utah gets the wrong calling. 
he's no longer the second counselor. He's saying that he serves as second counselor in the Young Men's General Presidency. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking from the pulpit, Wilcox referred to the church's previous policy. Policy? Churches? You mean Jesus. Jesus speaks to the prophets, and the prophets speak the word of Jesus to the Mormons. See how Mormons want to distance themselves away from Jesus when a Mormon gets in trouble. <laughs> but they're all about, oh, Nelson speaks the word of God to the people. And, yeah, they have no problem when everything's fine and happy time. But, nope, once some controversy comes up, oh, yeah, it's that individual. <laughs> you can't blame the individual for the whole church. <laughs> The church's previously policy on withholding the priesthood from people of black African descent. That wasn't the problem. <laughs> Austin, in a way that many found offensive and troubling. He said, I, I don't have the quote in front of me. But it had to do with the Lord. Why did the Lord withhold the priesthood from blacks? So he said the part out loud. <laughs> Two kids. <sighs> and so again, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to associate Jesus with bad. <laughs> and Brad Wilcox made that mistake in the public realm on Zoom to children. And so he came out immediately apologizing. Maybe we're asking the wrong question, Wilcox stated in his video apology. Uh, maybe instead of saying, why did blacks have to wait until 1978, maybe what we should be asking is, why did the whites <laughs> Reverse racism! Yay! <laughs> and other races have to wait until 1829. <sighs> Just dug his hole deeper. So... I've been going over with you all of this for four years, five years now. The church isn't true. This is why. I don't understand why ex-Mormons can't get this. I understand why Mormons can't get it, because we're born and bred in ignorance. And maybe that's why ex-Mormons because they too were born and bred in ignorance and still have yet to come out and recognize all the problems with the church. Maybe the truth about how evil the church is is too shocking even for ex-Mormons and they don't want to even discuss it. I've gone on to uh, ex-Mormon channels trying to help them understand no, the church is not a cult, it is a cult and they just ignore me and they don't understand and they keep doing videos about how the church is a cult and so I talk to you about how the church is racist sexist bigoted and hates the poor and people just say yeah whatever <laughs> and then this comes out this guy gets popular for posting it with 30 minutes of blank airtime on two of the clips rather than just doing the whole thing. <sighs> I mean, it'll be easier for me if I ever wanted to bring out the clip. I don't. He's just Brad Wilcox. He's nobody in the church. 
If it were Nelson, oh hell yeah, I'd be doing that clip, and then I'd be doing other clips, and then I'd put it all together so that it's one video. Even Oaks. <laughs> I'd do it for Oaks, because he's next in line. But, uh, you guys are not paying attention to my videos where I give you the correct information about church history. Ex-Mormons think they know it all because people have come out with tons of individual instances that the church has lied to us, deceived, or covered up. And so ex-Mormons take those one instances, even group the instances, having them separate but equal, and they don't make the connection to all of it. It's not that the church just isn't true. It's not that they have no authority from God. It's that they are the great and abominable church. Ex-Mormons know the Book of Mormon. You just have extra knowledge beyond Mormons because you actually wanted to find out why the Book of Mormon isn't true. So you found one person that said Joseph Smith used a rock and a hat. But then you find another person who says, well, Sidney Rigdon was the major author of the Book of Mormon. And you can't put the two together because they aren't equivalent. Who wrote the Book of Mormon? Was it Joseph Smith or Sidney Rigdon? There's confusion now. And you don't bother to find the answer. You just conclude and say, yeah, it's all fraud. Want nothing to do with it. You go around talking on your video channels. Oh yeah, it's such a fraud. Joseph Smith used a rock and a hat. How ridiculous. He's a witch. Burn the witch. And you, you don't factor in Sidney Rigdon. Or you talk about Sidney Rigdon and you don't factor in Joseph. You know, the apologists for the church, they say, well, uh, Sidney Rigdon was way over there and was not in Pittsburgh at the time and so there's no way he got baptized in December he wasn't a part of the Book of Mormon <laughs> and you fall for it and so yeah the real church history explains why the current church is racist sexist bigoted and hates the poor and why they won't change they don't plan on changing I told you I again told you today they're purging the church of all of you little sensitive snowflakes as they incite Mormons to hate. They got Brad. That's why he was put into the position in the first place. Because he demonstrated a level of hate worthy for the position to be over children. Boys, specifically in that case. But, uh, you know, I think they... Let's see. My dear friends, I made a serious mistake last night, and I am truly sorry. So, does he recognize that he made a mistake? He doesn't specifically say. He just says, I made a serious mistake last night, and I'm truly sorry. He then goes on. The illustration I attempted to use about the timing of the revelation on the priesthood and black for black members was wrong. He did not understand. He did not recognize what he did wrong. He's now saying, oh, it must have had to do with the timing that I illustrated. Because I've done the timing. 1978, for April conference, I still remember as an eight-year-old boy just baptized into the church on the 18th of March, which would have been a Saturday, I guess. <clears throat> and so that April conference, I remember, I was 
had my head, trying to get some sleep on my mom's lap. As uh, all of a sudden, an Eldon Tanner, who I had no clue who he was at the time, and that's having found out later, got up, gave the announcement, and the whole audience, because in Southern California we go to the stake center where there's the satellite feed showing to all of us, and we were in the back overflow, and, uh, and so it was on the individual hard chairs, or it might have been on, uh, no, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was the individual chairs. I'm not sure if they were padded from the Relief Society or if they were the regular fold-out chairs, but regardless, I lift up my head to wonder why is everybody causing a murmur in the audience? Everybody was like, oh, 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 and I was like, what's going on? An old man speaking on the screen. I had no clue. You know, I, there was a, I just, and so, yeah, but uh, I did the bombshell video for you that later that year, Congress, in the United States Congress, repealed the Edmonds Tucker Act. Talk about your timing. If you're unfamiliar with the Edmonds Tucker Act, I did those bombshell videos about how the church ceased to exist on the face of the earth. The United States shut down Brigham Young's church as a corrupt criminal organization. Stop the Perpetual Immigration Fund. Sounds like the Education Fund of Hinckley's, doesn't it? Did that bombshell comparison. Yes, the church is evil. Not just regular men who make mistakes. They are deliberately evil premeditatively evil. They know what they're doing and they do it anyway. But the church won't tell us that the church ceased to exist. And so people don't make the connection. There was no internet with Google to learn that Congress repealed the Edmunds Tucker Act. It was a sacred secret. This is why we rely on news to investigate, to learn these things and report it to the people. And the news here in Utah is sort of under the control of the church. And so there is no investigation of the church. It's up to people like me to do it so that you can have correct information to be warned of the danger to know that the church is trying to hurt you, to harm you, that they're getting Mormons and YouTube to help harm you and hurt you. So this isn't just one instance of one Mormon who, oops, worded it wrong. I reviewed what I said and I recognized that what I hoped to express about trusting God's timing did not come through as I intended. Really? You intended to get it past everybody that nobody would know what you just said. You got caught, and so you're only sorry you got caught. Which is a typical Mormon interpretation of repentance. 
and so to those I offended, especially my dear black friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, stop! The hole's getting too deep! <laughs> it's too deep! Stop! <laughs> I offer my sincere apologies and ask for your forgiveness. I apologize, so you have to forgive me, otherwise, you are condemned. <laughs> I am committed to do better. Oh, God. The church won't fire him. Now, ancient scripture at BYU. He was placed in his role in the Young Men's during the April 2020 session of General Conference. So, is he still? Or was it the other? No. I saw the the church's thing on Brad Wilcox that he was and is no longer but we'll confirm this is the video of Brad uh, let's see well Deseret News says young men's counselor so Wikipedia was not updated is a professor of ancient scripture at BYU, has been the second counselor in the young men's since April. Okay, so he is still... <sighs> oh, dear God. He's got a BS and an M in education. And a PhD from the University of Wyoming. And then you pull the religion card to get it. <sighs> and dear God. So you remember James Hamula? <laughs> Do you think we'll have somebody excommunicated from the church over this? No. <laughs> Unless the stink gets big enough. Like that did for John D. Lee. And so the church sacrificed John D. Lee in order to protect Brigham Young. And then his family, Senator Lee, had him rebaptized and all priesthood blessings restored a year later. You want to bet? In case you don't know, John D. Lee is the Mountain Meadows Massacre Bishop. And yes, Senator Lee is his direct descendant. And so now that makes sense why Senator Lee is of the party he is and is doing what he's doing and called Trump Captain Moroni. just gets worse and worse the more I talk about it because there's a lot to talk about <clears throat> so it must have been Channel 2 or Salt Lake Tribune that got it wrong let's see if I can find out who made the error ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Utah reports undercounting. Nobody cared about those. Ottawa declares a state of emergency. More U.S. troops. Uh, looks like I don't have it. Alright. Fine. Hey. So, yeah. The, the church purposely is purging the church. 
And so, yeah, all you little sensitive snowflakes who are offended with Brad Wilcox will fit right into the church's plans, and you'll leave the church. I'm giving my resignation from the church. I've had enough. But remember, oh, Nelson did that whole thing with the NAACP giving only $10 million, only $10 million to black education when Jeff Bezos's ex came out the very next day and gave billions. <laughs> uh, when are people going to learn? The church is pulling a con. They pretend to not be racist. They pretend not to be sexist. They pretend not to be bigoted. And the Arizona case, perfect example. The church is exempt. Do you understand what that means? No, you don't. Because you think it's great for you. And you miss that it's going to allow the church to continue to be bigoted. And you miss it. Because the church says, Oh, yeah, we support non-discriminatory laws. But they have to have religious freedom laws with it. And you miss that part. <sighs> and so, yeah, it's the same thing with racism. They support non-racist laws just as long as the church has religious freedom. <laughs> they support non-sexist laws just as long as the church can have religious freedom. Of course, then they have to explain why they caused the state of Utah to not give uh, is it the Equal Rights Amendment. I think it's equality when it becomes LGBT QIA PO plus range. Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, equal Rights Amendment is a constitutional amendment that will guarantee legal gender equality for women and men. Yeah, the church made sure to shut that down. Said, nope, women belong barefoot, pregnant, in the kitchen, cooking dinner. In a timely manner. <laughs> For when the husband gets home from work. You see, kids, in my grandparents' and parents' generation, <laughs> the economy was such that such a condition could exist in the United States as long as you were white and well off. But during the Reagan era, while I was a teen, when that, right before that incident in 1978, I soon realized uh, there's no way I'm going to survive. How am I going to survive once I graduate? I do not want to grow up. I, I don't want to be a, a Toys R Us adult. I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. And what, didn't they get in trouble for something? Is like Jeffrey a racist or something? <laughs> like the M&M's are sexist? And, <laughs> and Bert and Ernie are bigots? <laughs> what is wrong with people? Oh my god! Stop! You know, it's like they're desperate for a Brad Wilcox because otherwise they go after inanimate objects. <laughs> <laughs>